Yeah, response video to a Piero video. Um, you know, it was another one of his kind of way too casual, kind of sloppy videos. So, yeah, we have to response. So, anyway, I'll use his little tool for this. Um, I did make a little bookmark for myself. I have to send it to Pyro. So, you just hit the little bookmark up here when you're on a video. And it should load his little thingy bajiggy in this little box of a thing. Um, just seeing if it already signed me in. I don't know if it did that. Semi anonymous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's try to log in and just see what it loads. Just out of curiosity. No. Let's see if it loads my. Nope. I'd have to type it in. Alright, well, anyway, we'll go by the page I already did because that'll be easier. That's right. So we'll go with what's easier. So just for pyro, I'm going to just throw this part in. See this part here, pyro, scrolling. I really don't want to have to scroll down to get to my things down here if I want to edit them. You know, it's sort of a pain in the ass to have to scroll down, scroll down. Now this, this, this belongs up here. Yeah. This, you don't need all this space anyway. All this space is no good. Um, or something like that. I mean, it needs to be more accessible. But, you know, there's no good down there. This doesn't do me any good. Get rid of this stuff. Put this stuff below it and put this stuff up here. Or something. But, um, you yeah, know, get rid of this white space here and reduce this banner here. And get rid of this warning up here. Because you're just wasting vertical space, which you should know is a sin. So put your little warning over here. Put it after your little bannery thing. But why are you wasting a three quarters of an inch of vertical space? It's totally obnoxious. Uh, so we'll go with a bigger size. Let's see how the sizes go. That looks about right. Yeah. Alright, so uh, see now this is a real problem. You see, I have to scroll all right, let me do it right. I don't know why I can't scroll finer. All right, there. So I should be. I can access what I got to access. So we should be in business. So let us begin. Oh, we might as well play the beginning. Hey Gary, first of all, quit your bitching. I made two videos while you were gone. They both mentioned you, you whiny bastard. And the second one was out of concern for you, but I knew you'd be fine probably. And I was bitching more about the stupid infrastructure we have. There's no excuse. Yeah, it's true. There's no excuse and $12 billion and all that crap. So, yeah, we agree on that one. Anyway. I want to talk to you a little bit about this pleasure pain thing to give you sort of a, a, a bigger perspective on it. I mean, you talk about how terrible the life of the insects are, how, how harsh it all sounds when it's just there's no human sounds, no electronics, nothing. I have the opposite. To me, that's calming. That reminds me that it's worth living. That it's yeah, well, realistically, I just think you're you're just you're just pretending. And what's happening in the insect world is probably equatable to what happened on the dinosaur world, um, or you know some other, what even what you can imagine as a as a as machines, you know, that had some degree of sensation ability, um, and it's going on out there. And so you're assuming things that I don't think science has demonstrated to be the truth. So, oh, let me turn this off. That was, sorry. I had the battery backup thing going for the cigarette before and I forgot to turn it off. Anyway, sorry about that. That was annoying. So anyway, I just think you're, you're just, you're just phantasmic. You're just, you're just painting with a little fairy pretty brush, you know, and just making everything all pretty colors. Um, no, it could be real hell out there in that world. They all have little brains. And uh, a lot of these insects are capable of learning. And if they're capable of learning, they're capable of feeling, in my opinion. And uh, that should scare the hell out of us. Uh, that should concern us. They don't confirm the value of life. I hear the sound of the cricket. I don't hear bugs. It's oh. miserable. The beat. Miserable. No, I mean... You know, what does a fly do? It has sex and shits. Neither one of those things are too bad. And it flies around in this, like, super-duper Harrier jet thing. Right. And what does the one do when it's trapped in your house? Yeah, that's right. It bangs against the glass for hours and hours until it finally runs out of fuel and dies. Um, 
come on, they're driven by passions. They probably have fear. They probably have um, hunger. Um, you know, there's no reason for them not to. They have a developed enough nervous system. Um, I mean, think about it. I mean, just, I mean, you know, you're being so dismissive of this, but I mean, it's sort of important to understand that we evolved on completely, you know, we separated, you know, a billion years ago or whatever it was, 500, 600, 700 million years ago. We were set on different tracks. And um, think about the size of a fly or, or a, a wasp and the, the tiny, 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 tiny little brain. So, I mean, how many of those tiny brains make, you know, in volume, make a human brain? A million? I mean, how many? I don't know. So, let's just say it's a million. Would I want my brain or a million wasp brains? I mean, I'm taking a million wasp brains. I mean, they know how to fly. They got six legs that they make function. They can build goddamn, you know, nesty things. They know how to feed their... Look at all this stuff they have built in. I mean, it's an incredibly efficient brain. Um, and I think you're just talking out of your ass to say uh, that you know what they're feeling and that what they're feeling is nothing. I think they're probably feeling plenty. I mean, I think they have the same dilemma we have. They have a brain that creates sensations. Their antennas sense something. They get a, oh, it must go. They get a compulsion. Um... I think they get in positions where they have to make decisions based on imperatives. I mean, they don't think about it like we do, I don't think. But they have the same, just, just as we were maybe three million years ago, human beings weren't doing any complex th thinking. They were reacting to what was happening in their environment. And that's what these insects are doing. And I just think this is just a cop-out. You're just saying, well... You know, because their behavior is crude and they're not making Empire State buildings, I'll assume they don't feel anything. I mean, no, the fact they don't have language and encyclopedias, I don't think means you can dismiss their brains as being incapable of sentience. I just think that's a huge leap, not defended by any science. I'm um, flies around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, It'd be sorry. cool to fly something like that. And that's all they know. And they enjoy it. Why do they do it? Yeah, because that's what we are. We're need and avoidance machines, right? All of the life reactive, right? Especially for you with no uh, willpower. It's reactive, and the way it's made to react is it's fed joys and pains, right? Not a, the suffering. And yeah, well, this is where, again, you're getting kind of lazy. I mean, all life isn't doing that. Microbes aren't doing that. Oh, yeah, life with central nervous systems, we can start talking about what it might be feeling or how it might be functioning. And we can see that there's some organisms that are incredibly mechanical. They don't learn. They just do. Um, they're just completely reactionary. Um, and so you have to wonder about what goes on in that brain <clears throat> because what good would a feeling do? I mean, I've made the argument that the only value a feeling has is, is to send a message to an intelligence. So it has to have an intelligence. It has to have a memory. It has to have a learning capacity because that's the only value that feelings would really have. You wouldn't need consciousness otherwise. Um, it's only a faculty of, of, of you know, acquisition of, of um, um, you know, for the acquisition of um, specific um, tailored learned behavior well that's the wrong way to put it but learning is the key to the reason why we're sentient in my opinion oh gotta hit the right button play well, then, you know then you're either badly well you are badly tuned for your environment and you either change your tune and, and get it so that you have a balance or you change your environment and you find an environment where your attitude is balanced in relation to Yeah, this is just a more cop-out bullshit. This is just like saying, okay, so Adolf Hitler lives next door to you, he has a permit to burn Jews in his ovens, you can't stop them legally, um, you're just being an asshole if you let it bother you.
I mean, it's just bullshit. You're just finding excuses to excuse everything um, and calling it balance. For the name, oh, and this, for the sake of balance, accept World War II, accept World War III, accept World War V, accept World War 433. Yeah, for the sake of balance. I mean, this is just bullshit. This word balance is a bullshit word. Um, the whole argument that underlies this is that anti-natalist thing, and the whole point is, is there's no balance here, okay? There's no balance in addiction. Addiction is inherently an imbalance, and all of your contrived desires, all your attractions, your hungers, um, are an ex exaggeration of the truth. It is the breaking of the scale, so you're no longer capable of valuing correctly you're seeing things for a value they don't have, just like a heroin addict or a nicotine addict or some other addict. Um, it's a contrivance of your psychology. Nicotine doesn't have any value. It doesn't balance on a scale somehow. It doesn't do anything constructive. Um, our perception is the thing broken. Shit. You have this problem and you're wedged in a position like that. So the goal is to get yourself balanced, you know, and I, I... Yeah, well, again, you said it twice. Um, yeah, well, fuck that shit. Like I said, and that's not the goal. The goal is to find the truth. And what are we? And we are psychology seeking an artificial sense of purpose and balance um, for a selfish reason, not a logical reason. For a psychological reason, not a logical reason. Um, for, for a reason built out of tradition, bullshit, nonsense, false presumptions, lies, period, um, and not for the sake of the truth, and not in the name of logic. And the joy, they're both created by the mind as, you know, a result, a sort of a token, a symbol, variable of of uh, a gestalt, right? A single value of what's going on, what the value of things are. Yeah, well, that's the whole point, though. It isn't about the value of what things are. It is a perception in our brain. It has nothing to do with reality. Uh, just as our own kids aren't better than other people's kids, but by our own brain, we'll never be able to accept that. Our parents are always something special not just regular people. I mean, we have these huge biases that are right in front of us. We can see how our brain functions. We can see the bigotry in it. And to call it balance, if you balance your bigotries, no, the point is, is to isolate them and extract them from your perception, not celebrate them, not balance them. I mean, you could have no pain center at all, and it's the same with suffering could have a brain that couldn't suffer in principle. Yeah, well, whatever. Uh, there'd be no point, okay? Because, yeah, you're not going to have any pleasure either because the point is is that largely it's this false sense of deprivation of need that creates your perception of value and ultimately your pleasure is basically created out of a, a, a contrived sense of, of tension and anxiety and fear and worry and we can go on down the list of all these little... These, these, these little scars and, and bruises and boo-boos that we have always with us. And those are extracted when we have this thing called pleasure. We are relieved temporarily from, our, um, from the encumbrance of our worry and our fear and our tension and our aggravation and our pain. Uh, sensory pain. Uh, but not all psychological not all pain is sensory. Some of it is psychological. I mean, you could have no pain center at all. I mean, There's another and defect. The when you suffering. hit play, it starts you over again. And it couldn't suffer in principle. You need a resume button. And then you wouldn't be as smart about what to avoid. Oh. That's the problem. You wouldn't be as smart about what to avoid. Um... Yeah, well, uh, that, that again, you know, this is just basic biology. So, of course, we have the capacity to, uh, to feel as part of 
a mechanism of acquiring knowledge and experience that enables us to better navigate without causing causing less damage and then for humans obviously we've stepped way above that so we don't even have to have the personal experience we don't need to personally experience chemotherapy we can watch somebody else do it and say holy shit I don't want to do that um, so yeah we can we can understand threats and dangers without ever experiencing any um, torment or, or we can we can um, imagine burning to death or falling off a building or doing different things we can play a pretty accurate uh, newsreel footage of the event and so we don't even need it anymore in terms of a um, an actual event we don't have to actually our flesh doesn't have to melt for us to know fire will melt your flesh so it's just kind of a bullshit argument to make um, and it's a very crude mechanism um, in nature so animals suffer a great deal of wasted suffering you know in their throes of death uh, you know once they're physically damaged beyond repair um, you know if nature had any kind of compassion it would turn off the sensory mechanism and it doesn't oh and if you went without the pain center you probably go without the pleasure center and uh, frankly I think there's I mean there's something to be said for that I believe in thickening one's skin as much as one can because the skin is per oh whatever you know I mean take the metaphor and then metaphor the metaphor and then bring it back to some sort of reality in its metaphored form so now suffering is the thickness of skin again we're not rhinoceroses we're not um, and, and why should we again the, 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 you're, not, you're not defending it for some grand purpose or some accomplishment you're saying we should you know pay out to do this skin thickening to do what so you know we die with thicker skin and it takes the maggots a longer time to bore a hole into you what the fuck good is your thick skin going to do you when you are uh, you know an irrelevancy of the long dead past I don't think it's going to do you any good I don't think it's going to mean a goddamn thing yeah I don't I think I was just as much alive and as real a person when I was 11 years old and didn't have very thick skin at all hadn't hadn't acquired any any rhinoceros skin yeah I didn't I don't think I was so much better a person after I got thick skinned you know when I got tanned and and hided <laughs> yeah it didn't do me any good it didn't make me a better person this is just such bullshit I'm actual curious you know you just you keep things mellow, your pleasure is reasonable, and your pains will be reasonable. Um, so anyway. Um, yeah, and if you mix um, like um, juicy fruits and gummy, gummy bears and with some sweet tarts, and you mix them all in a bowl, it makes a clankety-clank sound, and they stick together. What the fuck does that mean? I mean, that's just all these little triteisms, the more little tritey mush. It doesn't that doesn't say anything it doesn't mean anything it has it's a, it's of no logical cognitive meaning I mean there's nothing there it's vacant it's baby talk come on get serious what I was gonna suggest when you get to that point with an idea it's time to diagram it you know, draw pictures of it you know what it yeah, I don't know why he exactly he changed. He kind of transitioned here in the middle into a subject about you know my frustration with the whole idea of how, how you you step past the, the end game. Um, I mean, when you've drawn certain conclusions and then it's all just about framing the conclusion. So anyway, but I just did a video. I mean, just last week where I was drawing pictures. Um, so yeah, I get that idea, and I'll probably do more of those. Um, uh, yeah maybe diagram um, insect psychology apparently some people need it they need you to draw a picture anyway 
Uh, yeah, you know, I don't see how you could say a fly's life is just a miserable raw thing. I mean, it has no pain center. I mean, a fly, it's just like, it either makes it or it doesn't. It does, because its life is so short. And yeah, well, see, you said something there is just wrong. You, you have no evidence that has no pain centers. That's just bullshit. Just made that up. Um, there's that some chick, the insect chick or whatever, Steph, Steph, or whatever her name is, Stephanie something, something like that. Well, anyway, um, she was talking about that last week in a video, you know, that they do have neurons that are pretty similar, but this whole, this is all pseudoscience anyway, this whole idea that there's some certain neurons that are just pain or pleasure centers and pain centers, there's no such thing in our brain, that is just bullshit. Um, I mean, if you're ticklish or you're not ticklish, it's not because you have tickle centers and not tickle centers. Um, you know, tedious, whether something's tedious or not, it doesn't, have, it doesn't go to a pain center or a pleasure center. Uh, it's just the way, you know, the brain is wired. And yeah, there's certain, certain things that um, we can tie certain parts of the brain to certain brain outcomes and functions because they're part of the, the network. They're on the road to the 7-Eleven or whatever you want to say. And yet, so it's part of the way you get to the end result is through some mechanism in the brain. But to, you know, to make these distinctions, this, you people are cutting this shit way too fine. Um, I don't think this is, this isn't real science yet. Not even close. And, and, what, and what you're interpreting is, is, as uh, not enjoyable, it, it doesn't have to have these backup systems. You know, insects don't have to have the same kind of pain systems as we have because... There's really nothing they could do about it. You know, it's such a crock of shit. Like there was something we could have done about it three million years ago. I mean, it's just bullshit, okay? They still have a genetic code, and if they're not a hive insect or something like that, they have an individual DNA that they're trying to get into the future, and they have every incentive to preserve their... They have they, they, the, the same incentives exist that exist for us and how we were constructed so I think it's stupid to imply that they're living by a different rule that they can sort somehow they're more disposable and they're only more disposable when they're in a hive or a colony or some other instrumentality where they're not the carrier of the DNA so this is kind of a bullshit argument you know, I mean, they don't need to nurse their leg. They're going to die in a couple of days or a month or weeks or whatever. I got that wrong last time. So, but whatever, you know, in a short period of time. Yeah, well, whatever. It doesn't matter, okay? And Zacadias live 17 years, okay? Most of it underground, but they live 17 years, all right? And they have to fight off enemies that mites and different things that might attack them. They have to survive this 17 years so they can... Uh, metamorphize and live for you know 30 days and you know eat drink and fornicate and die um, you know dragonflies I don't know how many seasons they live underwater but it's more than one pretty damn sure so again this is bullshit pyro so nursing their stuff they just go for it yeah, whatever. Like I said, they, there's no more go for it than us. And obviously, you can find lots of mammals that, you know, fight to the death or do extreme things in extreme circumstances. Um, but to argue that there's no sensation is stupid. I mean, obviously, a leg isn't as vital to most insects as one of our legs would be. So, yeah, they can lose one. And it's probably not, you know, the, the machinery is made to accept the losses, to accept damage. Um, but they still have to get to the end game. And, you know, they're not going to do that if they take on too much damage. So damage isn't free for them anymore it's, than it's free for us. They have pure, purely... Uh Enjoyable lives. Yeah. Oh no, but their guts are getting eaten out. Yeah, if you were human, you're imagining that you have pain centers. They are just getting consumed, and then it's going to be over. There's this sadness and tragedy that we project into it, and it's not because I don't think they're real creatures. I do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sorry. That, that just doesn't make any sense at all. You don't have any evidence to back that up. That they don't have um, pain centers. First, that's wrong. 
that they don't have neurology associated, the same kind of neurology that's very similar to how ours is. Obviously, they're very different because they're, we have million, hundreds of millions of years of separation. But let's not discount the efficiency of their brain. It has evolved over those hundreds of millions of years. And it's ours that is pretty damn sloppy when you look at it. I mean, when you look at how much their brain is doing, how much is getting done, all right, for the size of that brain. I mean, you just can't discount its functionality. And um, again, there's no reason to assume that they are not living um, passionate lives and ones where they can be done real sentient harm. Yeah, there really isn't any reason to do that. Um, there is reason to do it when it comes to a paramecium. This is the weirdness of your argument. You're, you're, it's like you're giving, you're giving insects no sentience and you're giving paramecium's will. It just doesn't make much sense. Sorry. Uh, no sale-ish and such. So anyway, fix this thing here. Um, you know, and get the resume. Pause and resume. I mean, it's not critical, but... Yeah, if you, if you, you know, for some clips I do make them longer, like I'm going to interrupt more than once. So I need sort of a pause and resume that works. Um, but anyway, it's not a big deal. Um, but this being down here is just kind of inconvenient. Uh, so let's see what size 6 does. Ooh, that's a big one. <laughs> yeah, that's big. Alright, well anyway, enough of the video. Shouldn't waste time. Um, so till the next time and such, and so forth and whatnot.